OSG, OSG, change the game. Come together, bringing leaders, we don't play. Make a difference, being different, switching lanes. OSG, OSG, change the game. Kev Livingston is just doing some really fly things. I want to welcome you to the OSG family. Welcome to the meetup. Like, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the OSG family. My brother Lays, my brother Dennis, thank you so much. Uh, Principal Keisha, I'm not sure if she's on here. I uh, want to give a shout out as well. Uh, I'm a fan of the network. I must say that first off, before anything else, I am a fan of Black excellence. And as I was telling you yesterday when we spoke, this represents what I always strive for is Black excellence. I love to see the connectivity and what you guys are doing on a national level to help up with uh, to up, uplift our community. So salute and light to you and all the OSG family. What we do is we have re-entry staff who work with men who are coming home from incarceration. Uh, we hire them directly out to jail, uh, men 25 and older. So they, when they come out, they get case management services. And in addition to that, we provide them with a free business suit to help them with their interview. In our Longton location, we run a cure violence site. So we work with young men and women who are either prone to being shot or those who are doing the shooting. Um, in addition to that, we work with active gang members and those who are in the ropes of being in the gang. So we have case management services for the young people. We have therapeutic services. I have violence interrupters in the community every day, working, walking the catchment area, making sure that there's no retaliations if there's any shootings. Like we had to respond to a shooting at a high school um, three days ago of a 14 year old who shot in the leg. We, my staff was out there making sure that there was no retaliation and then we was able to get in front of why the issue happened. Um, in addition to that, we also have staff inside of Rikers Island. So we work with the 18 to 21 population. We do a brother's brunch there monthly where we provide food and sit down with different housing units to create uh, uh, camaraderie, um, excuse me, um, to create, to create a, to make a creative space for our young people, give them a safe space to speak, but also not be judged. So we, we, we've been doing that for about six years inside the jail. Um, also, we are um, we have a youth advocacy component where we work with young people 14 and 24 who have been justice involved. We have staff for them, um, and we also do court. We appear for them in court and do court advocacy work with them. Tell me, what what inspired you to do this work, man? I mean, obviously, I can. Yeah. I care about our people. I care about our people. Yeah, honestly, there's no rap story. Like, I mean, no, you know, long story. I really care about our people. And, you know, I want to do something about it. I want to wait. Got you. So we uh, I got a chance to see you on Steve Harvey, um, um, you know, recently. I, I, even though it wasn't recent, I saw it recently. Um, tell us about that experience and how did he become aware of what you was doing with the 100 Soups? Absolutely. So thank you. Um, so we were... Um, Actually, I was able to, one of Steve Harvey's producers sent the young man for a suit. Um, and, you know, unbeknownst to me, that was the young man from that producer. And so she, he was, he told her how, you know, we was able to help him right away. He got the job. And then we got an email from Steve Harvey's show. Um, but this was ruffled around the time when we were, you know, working with our brother Colin Kaepernick. So he had pulled up some stuff on Colin and I was able to get, you know, I was flown out to LA for that. Yeah, so again, I, I know you've been doing a lot of work with Colin Kaepernick over the past few years. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about that. What's that What's that been like for you? That's my brother, you know. I felt like the NFL did him an injustice. You know, I was one of the very first, I was the very first person to actually hold a protest in front of the NFL headquarters in 2017 when, when, when they did, when, when, they, when they blackballed him from the league. And Colin has been a massive supporter of 100 Suits. He initially came to my office when I had one inside of parole. Back in 2016, I had an office in parole in Jamaica, and he came with his personal suits and, um, and, 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 and donated them to me. It was about 50 of them at the time. And, you know, we've just been working together ever since. And, you know, um, uh, last, right before the pandemic, the last Super Bowl before the pandemic, me and Colin, I brought him to Jamaica, Queens, and we spent Super Bowl Sunday inside of a, a family shelter uh, building with the families in there. So I noticed that, um, I think I saw a post maybe about a few months ago about your involvement in the Asian community as well. I noticed that they gave you, um, you know, they gave a, a pretty uh, generous donation to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us a little bit about that because obviously your work is, is going beyond um, the black community now and it's actually mm -hmm. impacting 
uh, other people outside of it. So talk to us a little bit about that experience with, with the I tell, I, tell, I tell people the origin of that story is not, I literally was going to a, a beauty supply. So this was in June of the 20th of, of 2020 when the pandemic was raging. Um, you know, the line, they started reopening the stores and they were not giving back. And so I was donating food to senior citizens and I was asking businesses if they could help me because I didn't have any money to pay these youth. And, but, but they were making money in our community. So I remember, you know, asking them if they could help me. They shut the door on me and told me to kind of get out. And so I said, listen, if you guys don't help us out in this community, you're making money in this community, we're going to rally and start shutting you down. And so by Friday of that afternoon, um, I got a phone call from the assembly person. I got a phone call from the Korean American Association. We all sat down and they donated to help us employ some youth so that we could continue getting food to the seniors who were still locked in their households during the onslaught of the pandemic. And when the, um, and when the, um, when the Asian hate started arising, I felt it was my duty, right, to help a community that helped us when we were in need. And so I started lending my voice to them. We would go into Chinatown, walk around Chinatown with them to make sure they see that not, because I want to get in front of the narrative that not all black people are harming Asian people because the media will show you that's what they're, that's what they're showing that African-Americans are, are 90% are the ones committing the eight, eight, uh, anti-Asian hate crimes. And so um, I wanted to make sure that I got in front of that narrative. I built strong relationships with them. Um, Eben, New York, which is one of the largest um, hair care, um, which is one of these hand sanitizers. They donated $1 million worth of PPE to Southeast Queens um, to help us help the senior citizens. I just thought it was a really ironic story how literally one year before I was ready to shut or well, put pressure on the store for making money in our community without giving back. And then one year later, not only are we working together, but they're investing back in this yeah, community. I thought that was a testament. We talked recently about something that you got coming up at the end of the month, which I thought was super mm -hmm. dope. And I want yeah, right to on. Share, share that with us, what you want to do with that and, and let us know how we can support what you're doing. So we, we, we're throwing our very first brother's baby shower. Uh, we are working with five brothers who, who have children on the way or and or have children one and old younger. Um, and so we're going to throw them a full on baby shower. We got the baby shower chairs. They're going to get diapers, handy wipes and clothes and bottles and, 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 and crowns, right? We're going to have them in the baby chair with the crowns on them. We, you know, we, we're going to crown these kings and make sure they have the resources to make sure that they can take care of their families. In addition to that, I just rented out a, uh, a massage therapy truck. So the fathers for two hours will be outside getting a massage therapy during the baby shower. We're going to do games. And so this will be every quarter, we're going to have a brother's baby shower for the black, for the brothers in our community who have children on the way, but it may not have it like that to support their families. I was one of them. So I know what it feels like. Wow. Wow. So, so Kev, what, what has been the response so far? from those fathers that you reached out to about this? Uh, so we, we have we have our fathers, because we, we, we make making sure that we're loving on them, right? We, we, don't, we, want, we want to make sure that we have, they get their time and, and, and make sure that they get in, in love. And so one, one of the fathers is still currently incarcerated, right? But we want to make sure that he's still able to take care of his daughter, right? And so he's one of the fathers that we're going to be able to support. Um, all of the other four are very excited, you know, um, most uh, four of them all have justice involvement. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the four is actually in child support court and dealing with family custody issues. I have experience in that, <laughs> right? Like I know what this is like. So it just, it's, it, it really is a, a, a moment for me because I'm able to turn around the narrative and help our brothers what I've been through going through that process. And so when I see the brothers get, sitting in these chairs as they have the crown in their head and they get in the diapers and they're able to do what they have to do and they pick all this stuff up and take it to the mother of their children as, as, a, as a, you know, here, here's my, my contribution. This is what I can do because I didn't have it before this day. It means the world to me. No, and, and so obviously here, there's, there's no shortage of, uh, of school leaders here in the room that can most certainly utilize your knowledge and your support as well. So what are some of the things that you're doing in the schools that you mentioned earlier? Righteous, righteous. Uh, so we have a conflict mediator that works in the schools, that works with young people who have had issues in the schools. They work with my violence interrupters on the outside. 
So basically what happens is if there's an issue during in the school, we communicate with the staff and then we have, we have a, a setup where we're able to come into the schools to defuse any issues amongst the children. Our education specialist works with family and they work with these kids in terms of making sure they stay up to par in their grades or whatever have you, but they're located in the school. Um, and we have full on family support, which is our outreach staff that supports the families on the outside. We understand that the DOE has a lot on them and that they can't touch every parent every time. So we wanna make sure that we're able to support the families. Again, it's the families I feel that's gonna help us propel the child. Good evening again, everybody. I'm Sakina, Principal Pitts out of Newark School of Fashion and Design, affectionately known as Principal Bars. Um, but Maria mentioned um, Do It All. And so Do It All has been doing a lot of work in the community. Um, you know, the West Ward is dear to his heart. He is running for the West Ward councilman seat. Um, however, even when I was the principal of Chancellor Avenue School, and you all know you've come through to us supporting the community big time, giving away coats and things like that. Um, and, and Chancellor Avenue School was in the South Ward, but Do It All was right there hand in hand with me, right? So ultimately, um, you know, his uh, organization is 211 Community Impact. He does a lot for all of the wards um, in North New Jersey. And ultimately, um, you know, they wanted to support women, right? And so um, they came up with a board and I am one of the members of the new board uh, for 211 Women's Impact Network. So 211 Win. And, you know, um, it's a group of women who um, are in a variety of careers. I'm in education. We have owners of CBD. Um, we have, um, we have uh, jewelry makers, just everything under the sun. Um, and ultimately what we are doing is um, su supporting women, uplifting women. Um, we have a website right now and it is going to be a hub, a resource for, you know, women in the community who um, need resources, need, you know, support, food, whatever it is that, that, that is needed. Uh, we just launched on March 1st. We know that this is women, um, Women's History Month. And so as a part of the launch, we are also um, moving forward with a women's empowerment brunch. It is going to be the first annual women's em empowerment brunch um, for 211 Women's Impact Network. And th this will be held on Sunday, March 27th in Newark at the Paul Robeson Center at Rutgers University. Um, we have a, um, you know, really fun-filled activity um, day for women, but also we'll be giving out a lot of resources, a lot of information, and we will also be honoring women who work tirelessly in the community to support other women and to uplift other women. Boss Lady, it, it's heavy on my spirit to remind you that um, you can be raised, right, as something but it can actually differ from your birth. In this moment, I'm thinking about David. He was raised a shepherd, but he was literally born to be a king. And it is in these moments, Sister Denise, I want you to be able to look into yourself and you be able to pull out the God that's in you. Because as your sister, literally at my height, I am but a mere reflection. I have watched the transition from the cocoon to the caterpillar, to the chrysalis, to the butterfly. I want you to, to, to rejoice in the chrysalis of where you are. The chrysalis is kind of uncomfortable. It's sometimes gooky and ooky inside there, but the essence of the butterfly is there. So when we think about the words of the wise women before us, like Maya Angelou, where she says, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but we rarely admit the changes it goes through to achieve such beauty. I want you to stand joyous in the transformation because you have literally stepped into your anointing in the most powerful, magnificent way. We're having this amazing dinner, you know, at my house tomorrow. And I'm going through all of the folks that are gonna be there. And I'm looking at my list and I'm, you know, Brother Dennis is like, yeah, we wanna make sure everything is together. And I'm like, you know, I, I love you, Brother Dennis, but you, you know, you can't come in my house without Denise. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know, it is important for her to realize <laughs> that not only, right, not only do you have a seat at the table, 
but you show me that you know how to build your own table, sis. Because what happens is, and what we get to do in this season of our lives, is we can step into our greatness in such a magnificent way where we look literally in the eyes of one another. When I watched you, I literally watched you on Sunday. You look into the spirit of everyone. You literally can see that, that little glint of love and life. I watched you with shine, shine. I watched you with everyone and you rejoiced. So to be another black queen looking at another black queen and you were just kind of giving out crowns. That's what you was doing all day Sunday, giving out crowns, being able to honor yourself and honor each other in that chat you lift us up. So I want you to literally take all of this in and remind yourself in this moment that as long as you continue to speak what you seek, you'll always see what you said. 